until Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Now, we, we really been digging into this, how God been showing us how he, God, sometimes we get into a place of comfort. <clears throat> so evidently, Isaac had to been thinking about going to Egypt for God to put that and say that to him not to go. All right. He had to have um, in his mind to go there. But God showed him that through this supernatural spiritual law, so on and reaping, I'm going to I'm going to show you how you're going to prosper. Amen. And you're not subject to the conditions of the world in this system. So we see here in verse 12, I believe it's 12. Um, give me a second, guys. I have to always. I'll tell you what. He sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. And so we see that he operated in this supernatural law and he caused spiritual, he activated a spiritual law to manifest kingdom provision here. Okay? If you go to verse 13, you're going to see, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became, um, put that in the Amplified. That's what I used to do that. I, and the man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. In verse 14, now remember now, he went there, and you can see what this law, this supernatural law did. He began to amass, right? He owned flocks and herds and a great supply of servants. I, I, and I'm gonna tell you something, he didn't come there with all of that. He came there with some of it. But as he operated in this law, we can see in verse 13 what he said, he gained, he became great and gained more and more. What happened? He began to operate in this supernatural ownership now where he is, he is buying up the land there, okay? He's buying up the land until he became very great. Amen. Now, in verse 14, you see here that the Philistine envied him. What happened? He had more than them. He had more than the, than the earthly government now, the Philistines. And they said, hey, you need to get up out of here because what happened? He, is, he's, he basically owned all this stuff. <laughs> And what happened? He had also op he have also uh, increase in influence yes. because supernatural favor come through the supernatural law of sowing and reaping. <laughs> it's, it's time to give, man. I, I can go so farther into that that I ain't. Even it's far, man. <laughs> Let's see you real quick, guys, so I can get to work here. Father, release an anointing over that seed. We speak the blessing over it. We thank you that it's multiplied back to the giver. We thank you that our harvest will not be delayed or denied. It will manifest. We thank you for it and call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You got your Bible. Let's go to Isaiah 54 and 51. We're still in our series here. We're expanding the capacity. But we're in a part called changing the seen realm by shaping the unseen. So we've been dealing with the spirit realm. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for revelation knowledge. We thank you that revelation will flow freely. 
unhindered, unchecked by any outside satanic force, and we bind the wicked one. And I release an anointing in this place. I yield my spirit, soul, and body to you. Think through my mind, see through my eyes, hear through my ears, and speak through my mouth that your word will be spoken in boldness and accuracy. We thank you for the greater one lives on inside of us, and I release angels in this place according to Psalms 103. 20 as sell and strength and hearken to the voice of the word in Jesus name. Amen. amen, amen. I, you know, yesterday we hit a spiritual depthness and, and, and it, it kind of changed. It changed something when we was out teaching this. It changed something. We're going to kind of go further <laughs> today. And so and I can tell the dimension change when I was teaching it. Um, I said 54, verse 1, and said, uh, verse 2, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habit habitation. So we begin to see here when he's when God talking about enlarging here, he he also have to scratch. He have to scratch. He had to scratch things. All right. He, he have to scratch us out of what we see all the time. He had. OK, he have to he have to open the curtain sometimes. All right. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy states, for you shall break forth on the right hand, on the left, and your seed shall inherit the Gentile and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Isaiah 51, 16, for I have put my words in your mouth and cover you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth. So now God telling um, Isaiah that I put my words in your mouth and cover you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant heaven in the earth. So now we see that it's not impossible. That is not impossible. As a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 11, 21, put that up real quick. I think that's the one I want. That your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your father to give them as the days of heaven on the earth. So, so God, heaven and earth is no longer in God. It's not separated. <laughs> It's not separated. So heaven can be on the earth because when God's when God's saying that there's no space. There's no volume. With heaven and earth. When God first created the earth. Adam, <laughs> Adam was built to visit God whenever he wants. OK. Okay. Oh, let me go to the other scripture. I'm, I'm about to take y'all somewhere else with that. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 3. <laughs> By faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive what? Ages, all right, were framed, fashioned, and put in order and equipped it for their intended purpose. By what? The word, the word of God. The word of God. OK. By the word of God. Now. So that what we see was not made of things which are visible. All right. What we see was not made of things which are visible. I showed you something yesterday. I showed you that. The physical realm, the seen realm is just a child birth by the unseen realm. So everything you and I see came from something we cannot see in the natural because it didn't come from the natural. It came from the unseen. Because I do not see it in the natural don't mean it's not real. Because the natural realm is just as real as the seen realm. As a matter of fact, it's more real. It's actually the real realm of reality. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which is not seen. So how can you look at things not seen? Look at that. He said, you can look, you have the ability because of our dual nature. You know, we are a spirit that has a soul and live in a body. Mm -hmm. And so we can see things in the seen realm, but we also can see things in the unseen realm. Amen. <laughs> All right. We call the unseen realm, but the spirit realm. It's the real realm of reality. It's the realm where everything had been created. And that we know is real because Ephesians 1 and 3 began to tell us this. Blessed be the God and our Father who have blessed us with all spiritual what? Blessings in heavenly places. So all blessings first is spiritual. It's unseen. It's unseen. 
So everything that you and I desire, God already have done it. So what is future to us is history to God. <laughs> All right. First Peter one, verse four, verse three, I believe. Uh, I think that's one and three. For blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse four to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fade not away reserved in heaven for you and I. So uh, our inheritance is not waiting for us to get there, it's waiting for us to call it here. Amen. How do you know that? Verse five, verse five, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Most people, they misinterpret this thinking that it's be revealed what they mean in the last days. They're actually talking about the process of faith. Faith has a process. All right. Reveal here. Salvation ready mean to be delivered, delivered. All right. And reveal is uncovered. But why it had to be uncovered? Because it's unseen. Because you don't see it don't mean it's not real. It's just covered. In the unseen. In the last time, it's the, it's, the, it's the last process which faith transported into manifestation. It's unveiled to manifestation. So it's kept by God, which is a spirit. John 4, 24. I showed you that God is a spirit. All right. God is a spirit. So there are spiritual laws God set in the earth. I never even got to the notion. God have set spiritual laws in this earth to change things in the temporal realm. So anything you see that is outside um, that need to be changed, God put spiritual laws in place to change them. All right. Just because a person says something don't mean it would happen. I'm going to show you this in a minute. Because there is a law that governs what you say. Okay? Because if you think about it, in that case, every word people say will come to pass. Every word. <laughs> Just think about that. Let's look at Mark 11:23. There are spiritual laws that governs things to manifest in life. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, say, so they saying it, right? To this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He's going to have whatsoever he what? Say it. You're only going to have whatsoever you say if you what? First, do not doubt in your heart. And the next thing, if you believe those things which you say. All right. So now let's just look at this. Believe those things which he say shall come to pass. You will have on you only have then whatever you say. Now, in Romans 3, 27, this is a spiritual law. Um, we talk this is the law of faith. Where is boasting then? It's excluded by what law? A worse? No, by the law of faith. So a law works the same every time. Every time. So just saying it, all right, don't mean you believe it. <laughs> there is a law that operates within this, the, the law of faith. Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Or we can say salvation here is deliverance. So now we call it the law of believing. Because I don't care if a person say this ain't going to happen to me. Uh, it won't come not me. It don't matter what you say. It matter what you believe. Amen. Because a parrot can keep saying, I won't get in the hot water. Let them keep saying it while I'm boiling the water. Because they don't have the capacity to believe. They do not. So they can repeat something 
and their heart do not believe it. Therefore, it go the opposite direction because when the heart believes, that's what put power to the words. Glory to God. This is how you operate in the spirit realm. When you don't have revelation, you just saying that you're no different than the parrot. Water hot enough. I won't get in the hot water. I want to get in the hot water. Okay. I won't get in the hot water. He'll go down in the hot water. I won't. Psst, psst. You in the hot water now. <laughs> if you don't believe that, you don't believe. It. Tell a person, no, you don't tell a person. A person standing in the road where there's traffic, I won't get hit. That's what they call, they do have something called the law of common sense, and that is a real law. I won't get hit. What, you violate that law, you gonna get hit. I won't get hit. I won't get hit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Violate that law and see what happens. So now, what we're seeing here is that, that the man with the, with, with the uh, heart man believe. Now, this, this is operating in spiritual laws here. Because you're designed to speak what you believe. <laughs> That's how he created us. He created us just like himself. Genesis 1, <laughs> verse 1. Yes. All right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, earth was that form void and dark was upon the face of the deep. That's, that's a whole lot into the verse two. I don't want to go there. But watch this. We see, we see the picture of the earth, all right? The picture of the earth, not pre-Genesis, but the picture of the earth right now. Watch what God do. Let there be light. The light came out of him because he was speaking what he believed. And when you speak what you, wait, wait, with the heart, your spirit, man, what? Believe. So for him, for God the Father to speak what he believed, it had to come out of him. So he give us this key here in Romans 10 and 10, it with the heart, the spirit, that man believe unto righteousness and confession made unto salvation. Amen. So now, what happened? Confession without believing, no power with that. Amen. All right? Now watch this. Man, where am I here? Okay. I know. So now... <laughs> Moving into this realm of power, you must operate in this law to get faith to reach into the unseen realm. Amen. Amen. Moving into this realm of power, you must operate in the law. Don't not be concerned about what you see. Because what you see is not all there is. Amen. All right. Job 38, 33 in the CEV. I want to look at that real quick. Job 38, 33 in the CEV. Do you know the laws that govern the, earth, the heavens? And can you make them rule the earth? Now, this is God talking to Job. He is talking about the laws, spiritual laws that governs the heavens. All right. Just like we have laws that govern the earth, that keep order. Frame, fashion, order for the intended purposes. So there are spiritual laws that governs the heaven. And can you make them rule the earth is what he's saying. Can you execute heaven laws in the earth? All right, watch this. He give us a picture of this in Job 33 verse 14. God speak once, all right, 
and yea, twice, yet man perceive it not. Wait. Now, what happened? God speak once. This is a picture of Psalms 119.89. When God spoke, it was settled in heaven. God speak once. Okay? So wherever he spoke, it's settled. So when it says speak once, that means the word first settled in heaven. Yea, twice. He, re- he, he opened the gate for spiritual laws to operate, to control things in the earth. Amen. That's what he means twice. That's why he said, yet man perceive it not. Watch this. Verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fall unto men, upon men, and slumbering upon the bed, I seal. Verse 16. I seal. He opened the ears of men and seal their instructions in their spirit. I can't do it while they're awake sometimes. Because they too, they too intellectual. They operate too much in sense knowledge. I, I was I got home yesterday. I said, man, I need to rest. And I can still hear the vibration of the word. He's sealing more stuff. Why? We breaking forth. We breaking deeper. He's sealing. I can I can I can just I can just kind of sense it in my spirit. He's sealing it. He's sealing it. He put more in there. He put more in there. Why? Because the spiritual ears is open even more. Now, watch this. Put that up 14 up in the T, not the TPT. I think I want the. um, No, I'm going to just leave it there. Okay. now watch this. Go back to verse 14. Let's look at this again. For God speak once. <laughs> All right. He speak once. Psalm 62, verse 11. Speaking it. Watch this. God has spoken once and twice have I heard this. So when God speaks, <laughs> he's spoken it once and twice I heard it. What happened now? His word is covenant. Abraham, Abraham. Anytime he spoke twice, he began to cut covenant. Now watch this. He's spoken once and twice have I heard this. This day, That power belong unto who? God. Now you can't, a person cannot operate in, just by saying you have power mean nothing. <laughs> Because power works to the degree you have revelation knowledge, Amen. not being like the parrot, right. just quoting stuff and don't really believe it. Amen. <laughs> On the middle of Bridgeport, the car won't come near me. OK. OK, breaking the law of common sense. <laughs> I'm showing you this because anytime time. I, I was showing you yesterday, why do, why do some words come to pass from some people and some words don't come to pass? The same words don't come to pass for others. It's because there are spiritual laws must be cooperated with. Yeah. And when you operate in spiritual law, I'm talking about God's spiritual laws, right? There are also spiritual assistance oh, yes. that help bring it to pass. Yeah. Hebrews 1, aren't they not all menacing spirits? Yes. <laughs> Watch this. I'm, I'm going to take you a little further than we did yesterday. All right. Hebrews 1. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Folks, this is, this is something. I think I want uh, Hebrews 1, verse 16, I think. Give me, give me a second. Let me get to this. Yep, 14. Are they not all menacing spirits sent forth to menace for those who shall be heirs of what? Salvation. Now, if you put that um, 
verse and the Amplified, watch this. Aren't not the angels all ministering spirits servants sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation? So now once I release uh, 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 release a spiritual law and put it in motion according to the word only now because Psalms 103.20 begin to show us this. You hear me pray it all the time. Psalms 103.20 whether I can see the angel or not, it don't matter. Bless the, bless the Lord, yea, his angels, that at sail in strength, that do his what? Commandment, and they hearken unto the voice of what? His word. Now remember, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and the earth. Now what happened? Now, once I do that and speak the word, the angels come and assist with that law, supernaturally. Whether I see the angel or not, it means nothing to me. Because they are sent to move on behalf of the kingdom. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 1, 14, and Amplified again, put it up. Are not the angels all ministering spirit? They're servants. Not for us to serve them. For them to serve us. Sent out in the service of God for the what? Assistance. So once a spiritual law is released, uh, by the word now, our angels, our angel or angels, are co- they are accompanying that word. Because they are hearkening to it to bring it to pass. Because, see, they see the end. Oh, Lord. Because they stay at the throne of God. They see what God see. They wait on us to say and believe what God said. Oh, Lord. Watch this. Watch this. All right. Now, as I'm speaking the word of faith and believing what I'm saying, the angels begin to accelerate in this law. I can't explain it, but it's like sometimes when I'm releasing words, angels skip details and just go straight to the end. Remember, I told you yesterday, God do not talk to man like like man. He talked to man like he talking to himself. Okay, watch this. Uh, Where am I? Okay. Put up Psalm 62, 11 again. I want to go further with that. God has spoken once, twice. Yeah, I heard of this. That power belonged to God. So spoke once, settled in heaven, spoke twice, loosed that spiritual law in the earth. That's what he did. <laughs> and when my and he's saying when my children speak this law in the earth and believe it, they activate it by faith. That's what he is saying here. Okay. The physical realm, I'm going to say it again, is just a child birth by the spirit realm. That's all it is. Let's go back to Hebrews 11 and 3. Man. By faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were fairing, fashion, put in order, and equipped it for their intended purpose by the word of God. By the word of God. So that what we see was not made of things out of things which are visible. So there are things you and I can't see in the natural because we can't see it. Don't mean it's not real. You don't see the air you breathe. But it's real. Glory to God. You don't see the wind that blow in your face, but it's real. Okay. Uh, Let's go further with this. In Matthew 14. (laughs) 
<sighs> so think about this. To alter anything in the scene realm, <laughs> we have to reach down into the realm from which it came from to change it. Yeah. To change it back to its intended purpose. Because in the scene realm, Satan can manipulate things. Mm -hmm. Remember, he can't create, but he can bend a spiritual law through deception. Because remember now, he came from heaven. He got kicked out. He know the laws. He know he can't change it, but he'll bend it. To make, to, he bend it on the other end to make you doubt. Because he know faith is a force that would destroy him and it always bring you into victory. So what he do, he bend that law another direction. And what happened, it seems like that law is working, but it's not. Amen. It's a line sign. Amen. And a person get in doubt. And that's exactly what he need to stall your faith. Yeah. Remember, believe and doubt not. OK. Now watch this. What, what, did I tell you to go somewhere? Matthew 14. Matthew 14? Okay. That's not in the notes, but we're going. Amen. We'll see what the Lord say about it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Matthew 14. Hmm. Put up verse 13. <laughs> when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert a part of desert place apart, and when the people had heard there, they followed him out foot out of the city. So watch this. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Verse 15. And when it was even, his disciple came unto him, saying, This is a desert place. The time has not passed. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves visual. Stay right there. So what we're seeing here, the disciples thinking the only way these people can eat they must go to another location. Yes. But Jesus reality was always the unseen first, mm -hmm. because wherever he walked, heaven was with him anyway. <laughs> Bless in the city. Yes. Bless in the field. Bless coming in. So the reality of heaven was always with him. So it wasn't really no difference with heaven and earth on him. Wherever heaven, earth was heaven to him. Amen. Because he can produce heaven results anywhere. Amen. Because he understood that his that origination from everything seen came from the unseen. Amen. So it was even his disciples said, hey, send these people away. So they can go get something to eat. But Jesus wasn't looking at, well, the food is at a distance. And the disciples saying that too because they, they didn't want to, you know, it's 5,000 people, they didn't want to be paying all that money. Verse 16, watch this. But Jesus said, they don't, they don't need to depart. You give them something to eat. In a desert place now. Verse 17. They said unto him, we have here but five loaves and what? Two fishes. The same realm is all they had was five loaves and two fishes. One of the gospel, I think in Mark say two small fishes. Verse 18. Watch this. <laughs> he said, bring them to me. Bring them to me. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, took the fire low, two fish, and looking up to heaven. Look at this now. Look at this. He blessed. This is a spiritual law where he empowered what was in his hand through heaven. He empowered it. He blessed he didn't say, well, thank you for the food, nourish my body. He wasn't talking about that. When they talk about he bless, he operating in Genesis 1, in a spiritual law here. Genesis 1, Verse 
the name of the song, Looking Up to God, well, where blessing flow, something to that degree. All right, that's why he looked up to heaven. God said, let us make man in our image and after our like, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every creepy thing that creep upon the earth. Go to verse 28. He blessed. And God blessed them. Now, let's see how he blessed them. Because he wasn't saying bless the food that we may eat and blah, blah, blah. He blessed. Jesus blessed, right? And God blessed. Let's see what he did. God said unto them, this is what Jesus did, be fruitful. He took the food, multiply, replenish the earth. Because that is the mandate God put on the children, us, in this earth. Be fruitful. That's what Jesus did. Looked up to heaven. Be fruitful. He looking at that storehouse. Yes. Multiply yes. and replenish the earth. Yes. Now watch this. Go back to Matthew. Watch this. So he looked up to heaven. Be fruitful. Yes. Multiply and replenish the earth. Amen. He set a spiritual law in motion. Amen. And they said he break, break, not only just break the bread now, all right? He broke a spirit of limitation. Amen. If you notice, then he gave to the disciples. Yeah. Now, given to the disciples here, he activated the law of sowing and reaping. He got two spiritual laws in motion here. Because he pulling from the supply room, the storehouse. Gave the law to the disciple, the disciple to the multitude. Watch this, verse 20. And they did all eat. Now, it's 5,000 people, men, not include women and children, 20,000 folks, really. So, where did the bread come from? Because it, they didn't go into the town. It didn't come from the bakery. Well, at least not earth, the earth bakery. <laughs> Peter didn't go fish. Go fish. Got it. Go fish. All right. <laughs> he didn't do that. Jesus transferred it from the unseen where there is an unlimited supply because he said, just let them eat. They didn't have somebody standing up and say, you're going to only get a half a sandwich. You know how church people get. They don't want to give people a... Uh, Abundance because they think they're gonna run out. I was like, well, you know, give them third, four. Who cares? You know, I had to tell them like, hey, just give the people food. Who cares? You know, they if they like it, just let them eat it. God will multiply it. Yeah, probably why we got our hot dogs right now. Um, we need to we need to give them to the food bank, and they did all eat, and were what feel. And they took up other fragments that remained 12 basket full. Now, <laughs> if that's the case, Jesus gave us a mystery in Luke 4. Let's go there. As I'm talking to you, he's going to download the mystery. Because I just heard it's a mystery. Verse 2, Luke 4, 2. Being for the day tempted of the devil, and these days he did eat nothing. He, uh, when they were uh, ended, he after a hunger. And the devil said unto him, If you be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Why? What Satan want him to turn a stone into bread? What is Satan trying to do? He's trying to get Jesus to break a spiritual law. Oh, 
Okay. He trying to get him to break a spiritual law. Turning a stone into bread, taking something seen and try and make it something that is not birth to be. That is witchcraft. It's deception of the mind. <laughs> no different than this. I'm pulling a rabbit, abracadabra, pull a rabbit out of a hat that wasn't in the hat at first. The demon put it in there. So he's trying to get him to break a spiritual law for a temporary for temporary pleasure. But watch what Jesus said. Now this is key. Next. Jesus Anderson said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word which is bread from heaven. Yes. All right. Living by bread alone, you will run out. You limit it. But by every word of God, bread from heaven, you will keep replenishing. Because it's coming from the unseen, he's saying. Satan trying to get him to try to turn something in the seen realm to something that it was not originally supposed to be. That's breaking a spiritual law. That's why you see men trying to turn to women. They breaking spiritual laws. And then a lot of them is committing suicide because they, 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 they genetics is getting remodified by man. <laughs> wow. This is what it's all about. Now, why is that? This man confused. He want to do this and do that. Why? Because Satan trying to raise up his own race. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't took you too far. Okay. Now, this is what's going on. Because, you know, <laughs> if he made the stone a stone, <laughs> it's just a stone. Okay. It's not bread. Okay. If he made a man a man, turn that stone to bread, turn that man to a woman. What's the difference? They broke a spiritual law. And so now the genetics is so messed up. They commit suicide because they say, I don't feel now like I'm supposed to be in this body. You don't. I'm showing you something deeper here. Okay? I ain't offend nobody. Just tell you the truth. You offend that between you and God. Now watch this, okay? <laughs> Come, man, man, don't run me. <clears throat> don't run the church either. Jesus does. Jesus is Lord. Just remember that. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. Jesus is Lord. So, so man, fallen nature is not. <laughs> just, just remember that. Okay, man, fallen nature is not. Why do you think that man trying to corrupt laws to force you to believe certain things? You gonna say that same-sex marriage is, is okay in the Bible? Nope, it ain't. I don't care what nobody say. No, just it's not. It's not. I never seen a male dog get on another male dog. So I know we ain't made for that. Did they understand the laws of nature? See, some people get offended by me saying that. But it's the truth. If, 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 if you so right, why are you trying to get me not to say it? Why can't I believe what I believe? And you trying to regulate what I believe by writing a law and say, if I do it and say this and say that, it's hate. Well, they hated Jesus, so whatever. Amen. All right. <clears throat> I'm just saying, I don't hate nobody. I love everybody, but, Amen. you know, the hate comes from another end because of truth. Okay? Right. Right. I saw something. I want to see what I've seen in that. Let me think real quick. I think it was in First Thessalonians. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. You made me want to shout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you. In these last days, there's going to be a whole lot of lines, signs, and wonders. I'm telling you. Why do you think they're trying to teach your kids the opposite of what you teach them? I'm just telling you. It's because the fight is for their mind. I say it again. The fight is for their mind. Okay? Parents, you better make sure you know what they're teaching them. Because a, 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 a kindergarten and a, and a first grader shouldn't be seeing porn. This is what they're showing now. This is what they're showing. They're trying to normalize a behavior. This is the enemy now. Now, I, I, the people are lost. They walk in darkness. But you have pastors that don't want to talk about that. <laughs> they're afraid. They're afraid that people will stop giving. You know, because they probably rule by money. They're afraid. But in these last days, we're not in a battle. We're in a war. Amen. We're not wrestling in flesh and blood. These are master spirits. Amen. These are master spirits that know how to manipulate yes. and make something so appealing that maybe same sex is okay. No. I've seen in the Bible where God blew a whole city off the earth and they never returned back and were cursed. Oh boy. The pastor ain't loving enough. No, I love him enough to tell the truth. Somebody gonna have to talk about this. Somebody gonna have to talk about this. I'm, I'm gonna find what I'm looking for. Okay? I'm going to find what I'm looking for. Just give me a second. The enemy have perverted the word to the point where wrong is right in people's eyes. And right is wrong. Have you thinking if you do something with the word, you'll get, you'll get condemned. Because you don't want to make somebody feel bad. But what is your peace worth? Amen. Amen. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay? Because in these last days, the church have to be the church. Okay? The church have to be the church. And I'm going to find what I'm looking for. I was just, you know, reading something and I flipped there and I said, I've never seen that before. And I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So, so I've never seen that before. Okay. In these last days, you had to take on a warfare mindset. Because you don't hate people. Because the law of love governs your life. But what you're dealing with is spiritual wickedness in high places. If I unravel the demonic spiritual wickedness, those, you know, the witchcraft, whatever it is. If I unravel that, you can save a whole lot of people. Right. See, you can't regulate things in government. You can't regulate a belief system yeah. through a law, a government law. That's not regulated. You can try, but that's not regulated. Yeah. All right? What you have to do you can't fight a battle. <laughs> you have to deal with it from a warfare perspective. Yeah. What's behind it? Yeah. Because once you see what's behind it, you can unravel that. Yeah. Okay? Because I'm always looking at what's behind that. I see what they want me to see, but what they don't want me to see. Yeah. <laughs> Go. They want you to see what's on the news, but what they don't want me to see. <laughs> okay, okay, just, I'm just showing you, sir. Okay? 
man, I, I, I'm, I'm whew. the enemy. He understands spiritual laws, but he just bent them. I put, I put something down. I'm going to find it. If I don't find it now, I'm going to get it in the next service. I'm going to show it to you, okay? I'm going to show you this. He bend them. I, put a, I want to write, read this statement. If you go to 1 Samuel 28, man, I got two minutes. That's all? Can I borrow three? Okay, let me borrow three. Okay, let me borrow three. Okay? I'm trying to make sure they can have a good turnaround for the service. For the next service. Okay. I don't know why did my mind keep going back to Titus. I'm, I'm, I'm in two places just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes um, when things are going on, the enemy, <laughs> he don't want you to come into another level of light. But, but I'm stubborn in faith. I'll find it. Man, I'm going to find it, man. I ain't going to, I'm not going to just give up on that. I'm going to find that. Okay? Now, this is not talking about hating people. Because a lot of people just lost, and their mind is not set in the right order. Right? You got to love people and deal with the darkness that covering their mind. But you can't deal with it by arguing with them. They in darkness, you can't argue with that. You have to take spiritual authority over it. All right? So that's what you have to do. Now watch this. It's 1 Samuel 28, verse seven. I'm gonna show you something. Remember, Satan can't create. He can only bend a spiritual law through deception to get doubt there. Then says Saul unto his servant, seek me a woman. Now remember, Saul had a prophet named Samuel. Samuel died. Mm -hmm. So now Saul, because God ripped the kingdom from him, Saul is out there on his own with no spiritual eyes. Yep. Right. That's dangerous. Yes, sir. Why is it dangerous for a person not to have a covering? Amen. They ain't got no spiritual eyes. Amen. They just moved by every wind and doctrine. They think, and let me tell you something, the, the TBN, they start, they are excellent tools. But it's never in ten for you not to be under covering. Yes. There's no excuse for that. Amen. Well, the church 20 years ago hurt me. What they got to do it now? Amen. If you had a bad doctor, I'm pretty sure you won't stop going to the doctor. You just found another doctor. Yep. You see how the enemy bend people's minds? Right. So anyway, that's just something <laughs> that amazes me. That I may go. He says, seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there's a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Now, how did he know it was a woman? He said, Seek him a woman. Yeah. How did he know that? Those demonic spirits have been whispering to him, leading him. Because God is no longer leading him. Watch this. And his servant said to him, Behold, there's a woman that hath a familiar spirit of Endor. It's the witch of Endor. Verse 8. Now, you may see some strange thing happen this month because witches love to come out in the month of October. Yeah. But it won't come near you. Amen. Trust me. Amen. I really dealt with it in the spirit. It won't come near you. Amen. Only thing you got to do is stand and bind. All right. <laughs> and Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him and they came to the woman by night. He said, I pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me. Him up, whom shall I name unto thee? Verse 9. <laughs> Why? Well, it's dangerous to mess with astrology. 
Yeah, you need to know what, uh, my, what's my sign saying? You don't want that. That's a familiar spirit. The Bible tells us stay away from that. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul had done, how he had cut off those that have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? So now remember, Saul had did this before he fell. He was cut off. He put that law out there. But watch this, verse 10. Saul swear to her by the Lord. Boy, that joke are wicked. Swearing by the Lord to do something wicked. Watch this. As the Lord liveth, there shall uh, no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Verse 11. Then said the woman, who shall I bring up unto thee? Look at this. Bring up. Put that in the amplifier. Who shall I bring up unto thee? He said, bring me up, Samuel. Verse 12. And when the woman saw Samuel, she screamed and she said to Saul, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. All right. Now watch this. The king said to her, be not afraid. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a God terrifying superhuman being coming up out of the earth. Think about what she's saying. It's a demon disguise. That's why when people say I saw they great, great, I saw their great, great grandmama. That's a demon yeah. in the skies. Yeah. If they're in heaven, they ain't coming back. Amen. They don't want to. Yes. That is a demon Amen. in the skies. Watch this. Okay? If spirit come visiting you, you better bind it in Jesus' name. No, none of your kin folks will come back to you. Amen. And I'm watching you online. None of your kin folks will come back to you. That is deception. That's a demon. Now, this is what I said. What this shows us, all right, <laughs> that the enemy, he can only bend reality through witchcraft. All right? But believers can change reality through the word. That's the difference. He can only bend reality. And that's what that witch did. A demon came up. One version began to talk about and to amplify that message in verse 13, the message. You have nothing to fear. Go, go. Watch this. But what do you see? She said, I see a spirit ascending from the underground. These are demonic spirits disguising themselves as Saul, uh, Samuel. God, do not send people that have died back. Those are demons disguised to deceive you. And if you ever see one, bind it in Jesus' name. All right, it's time, I'm finished guys. It's stand to your feet. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna take it further than that service. I'm not even finished with this, cause I'm gonna take it further than that service. Boy, God love me talking about that unseen realm. He love when I talk about it. Sometimes I just get in a stare, seeing, seeing the angels that's moving. Boy, they love God. I'm telling you. I'm going to find that scripture in a minute. Father, we thank you for the word. And I'm going to tell you the next service of what I'm going to do with whoever stay or whatever. Watch this. Father, we thank you for the word. Let it penetrate into our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right.